In the last couple of videos, we talked about bras, kets, and brackets in the context of Dirac notation. In this rather short video, we'll go one step further and dive into the mathematical constructs known as operators. You can think of an operator as a transformation, which takes an input ket or bra and transforms it into another ket or bra. The reason we care about operators in quantum mechanics is not only do they serve as transformations, but certain types of operators also represent physical quantities. For example, in finite dimensional space like R2, it's possible to represent an operator as a matrix. In addition, as mentioned earlier, a ket can be represented by a column vector, while a bra is like a row vector. Because of this, you can probably see why operating on a ket has to be done from the left, while operating on a bra has to be done from the right, because otherwise matrix multiplication wouldn't be valid. In a function space, it's a bit different. Operators aren't generally represented by matrices. For example, an operator in function space could be a derivative. We can go over some neat properties of operators. The first one is that operators don't commute, so the order by which the operations are carried out matters. This is just like how matrices don't commute, as you might remember from basic linear algebra. The second one is the associative property. And the third one is the power property. So if I have an operator a hat operating n times, and I combine it with the operator a hat operating m times, that's the exact same as operating a hat n plus m times. You can compare this to raising matrices to powers as well, and you'll see that it's consistent. The fourth property is that this variation on the bracket is a complex number. The reason is that if I just look at this part, then a hat operating on psi is just another vector psi prime. And in the end, what you end up with is just the inner product of phi and psi prime, which, as we all know by now, is another complex number. There is a couple of more points to be made. One of them is about linear operators. A linear operator is one that obeys the following rules. One is that an operator operating on the sum of multiple bras or kets is the same as the operator operating on them separately. The other rule is the constant multiple property. The expectation value, or the mean value of an operator with respect to a state psi, is given by the ratio of the following brackets. Now you might wonder how a transformation can have a mean value. I mean, it's a transformation, isn't it? But remember how I mentioned earlier that some operators represent physical observables? That's where the expectation value is significant. For instance, if my a hat is the position operator, then the expectation value of a hat would just give me the mean value of a particle's position. The last property is that this ket bra product, also known as the outer product, is also an operator. In fact, you can show yourself that it's a linear operator. For instance, in a finite dimensional space like R2 or C2, the ket psi would be a column vector and the bra phi would be a row vector. And a column vector times a row vector, as you know, is a matrix which, as we said earlier, is a lot like an operator. That's all for now. In the next video, we're going to talk about four important types of operators, particularly Hermitian, projection, inverse, and unitary operators.